to get started with, we're going to be doing this big stonefly nymph pattern. So we need a great big hook. It's a 2x, 3x long hook with a ring eye. So we're, to build up our body, we're going to first start off with some single strand floss. And I always like to use white. That way I can come back in and make it whatever color that I want. We're going to put some anal gills back here and also just a little dubbing ball so we can separate our tails. For that, what I'm going to be using is some leech dubbing. I want, some, I want this fly to be nice and buggy looking and the leech dubbing does a perfect job for that. I'm going to get some of this onto our thread and we don't have to worry about it being real tight. We're going to want it to be somewhat shaggy anyway. Don't want it quite that shaggy though, so we'll trim that up. Now we're going to tie in our tails. For that, we're going to use turkey biot. And since we're tying this in brown, we're just going to use some brown turkey. And we're going to make it so that they curve away from each other, even up the tips. Just like that, we'll straddle that hackle or the hook shank, get them up there for our length, which is usually about the hook gap length, and we'll tie in our tail. And we'll just continue wrapping forward to add some more bulk to the body. That's one thing about these flies. I'm going to use a lot of material or bigger materials compared to what I'm used to using, which is small biots and CDC. To build up the inner body, what we're going to do is use some lead wire. And this can be used to add some weight, but it also forms a nice foundation for our fly. So I'll take a hunk of wire, lay it on the side away from me, and I'll tie that down just to hold it right in place. Then I'm going to take a little more wire here. Do the same thing on the side towards me. What we're doing is adding some weight, but more importantly, we're building the foundation for our body. Get it down, tied down good. And then we'll just come in and kind of pinch it to make sure that the lead hasn't twisted. And we're right on the side of the hook shank. Now we're going to take the wire, fold it back, tie it down, and this time we're going to go right back down to the tail. Come in, cut it off. Bring our thread forward again. We're going to do the same thing on the side towards us. And what this does is create a nice flat and tapered body from the tail on up to the thorax area. And just to make sure everything's nice and flat, just kind of pinch it and twist it, just like so. Now we're ready for the body material. For that, we're going to be using some D-rib. And this is in, in the medium size. And you can use the standard, or if you prefer, you can also use it in a glitter form. So we're going to tie this in so we have the D up on top. And we just keep going with our thread here. Kind of cover it up. Make sure we have a nice smooth underbody. And we're just about there. Bring our thread forward and now we'll just take the floss off. And we'll attach the thread that we're going to be using to continue on with the fly. So we just get our regular thread on here, and we're ready to go. Now we'll just wrap this D-rib forward, and you want to make sure you have one wrap right in front of the other. And if you want to make, make some alterations, or I guess 
not alterations, but kind of highlights to your body. You can color the underbody with a tan marker, orange, or even a yellow. Just something to give it a little different hue when you wrap this translucent material forward. Wrap our body and tie this off. And cut off our body material. Make sure it's tied down real good. Next thing what we're going to do is put in some dubbing which will use, be used for our thorax. And to do that, we're going to use that leech dubbing again, but we're going to put it in a dubbing loop. That way we can make this fly nice and shaggy looking when everything's all complete. So we'll attach our stonefly loop dubbing tool. Then we'll just start placing some of the leech dubbing in our loop. This happens to be the brown leech dubbing. Nice, nice thing about the leech dubbing, besides being great for leeches and still water flies, it's great for adding a lot of bulk and fiber and general bugginess to any large flies that you might create, like this stonefly. So we'll get that twisted so it's nice and locked in there so it doesn't go flying out. And just give it a twist and make making sure it's nice and tight. Now to get started, we'll take a few turns of our dubbing right at the back here. And we'll take a couple turns of thread to hold that in place. We'll set this to the side into our material spring. We're right back with our thread here. And we're going to add some rubber legs. So we'll peel off some round rubber here. What I like to do is just double it over. And we'll just tie it in the middle there. And then pull it over to the side towards us. And we'll do the same thing on the side away from us. Nice thing about the rubber, it's fairly thick, giving the illusion of the big massive legs these bugs have, but it adds a lot of movement to your fly as well. And we'll just Fold these others back in place just like so. Make sure they're tied down. And we make sure they're kind of pulled down on to the side. Now we're ready to start doing our wing case. For that, what we're going to be using is just plain white Tyvek. I've already got one cut here. This is going to be our first little wing pad, so we're just going to take it. Fold it in half, then we'll come in and cut it at an angle, and then you just kind of round it off. And then when we unfold that, we have our nice little wing pad here. We lay that right on top of the hook shank, and we'll take our thread with the loose wrap and then cinch down. And just wrap back onto it. Make sure it's tied in there good. Come in, cut off our excess. Now we'll take our loop dubbed leech dubbing here and we'll add some more dubbing to cover up where we tied in that wing pad and just add some more bugginess to our overall fly. Got enough in there for the moment. Make sure that's tied down good. And we might as well add another set of legs in here. We want this fly to have a lot of movement as it's bouncing along the bottom of the river. This time we'll just use one strand. Just tie it in like you're doing a Madame X. 
That was a little short piece, so we need a little bit longer one here. Tie that in on the side away from you. And then just fold these back just like what we did before. Since that one's pretty long is getting in the way, we'll get that out of there. Now we're ready for the remainder of our wing case. Here again, we're going to be using some Tyvek. And I've already got it pre-cut. You want a fairly good length of it. Again, fold it in two, right down the middle. Cut it at an angle and kind of round it off a little bit. And we'll have that same little wing pad again. Set that up on there and tie it down. Now instead of cutting the excess off this time, what we're going to do is just fold it back and tie it down again. Make sure it's tied down good. Now before we get any further and get too much material up front, just so we have enough room, we're going to tighten the antenna. It will be the same thing as the tail, and that's the turkey biot. So we'll take some brown turkey. We're going to lay one on the side away from us. And we'll do the same thing on the side towards us. Just like so. Make sure it's tied in good and cut off your excess. Then we can, can continue with some more dubbing here. Oop, pulled it out of there, so we'll just wrap it in there. Just like so. Tie it off, cut off our excess. Now we can pull our wing case forward and we'll tie it down again. Come forward a little bit. Now before we cut off that excess, fold it back one more time. Tie it down. If you want, you can also add some eyes at this point, but we're not going to do that. We'll just add some more leech dubbing here. Didn't quite have enough uh, in that loop to begin with. Get a little more in there so we can make this fly really buggy. Just like so. Then we can take this wing case and pull it over the top one more time. Tie it down right behind the eye. And cut off our excess. Yep. Helps to have those fine tip scissors like the ones here that I'm using from Stonefly. And then just come in here and finish it off. The nice thing about using the white Tyvek, now I can come back and make it whatever color that I want. So we'll kind of square things up here a little bit. Now I'm going to take a brown magic marker. And I'm not going to, I'll just kind of dot it a little bit. Don't make it one solid color. So I'm going to show you a little trick here that you can do when working with Tyvek and Magic Markers. Just, what I've done is just bought a cheap bottle of fingernail polish, dumped it out, and put some paint thinner in it. That way I have a nice little bottle with a brush on here. Then I can just go right over the Tyvek and it will kind of bleed and manipulate the colors that we have. 
on our paper there. And if it isn't quite dark enough in areas, you can always come back and make it just a little bit darker. Then I'll come in, just kind of trim my legs a little bit long here. Get some of that rubber out of there. And we're getting a little too scraggly back there. And we have a nice stonefly nymph that's really buggy and it's going to have a tremendous amount of movement in it. Mm -hmm.